It's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. Thanks for being back with me again today, or maybe it's your first time. In that case, welcome. So I have a special story for you. I'm reading out of Bible stories for children again. So we've been reading about Adam and Eve in the garden. And last time we learned about the serpent, which was also Satan and how he is trying to trick Eve into doing something that she should not do. So we're on part two. That's the story of the Garden of Eden and the fall. And we're on story four, the test of love. As Eve stood by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, listening to the soft-spoken words of the serpent, the first doubts entered her mind. God had said if she ate of this tree, she would die. Now, the serpent said she wouldn't die. Who was right? Could it be that God had not told the truth? As she thought this over, the Satan followed with another evil thought. He said, For God knows that in the day you eat of this, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. So, he was suggesting that God had been unfair to Adam and Eve, and that he was holding back something that belonged to them, and maybe that he was jealous of them, afraid that they might be wise like him. It was very mean and wicked, of the serpent to say such a thing. But God had always been so good to Adam and Eve. But Satan is like that. He's always working against God, always suggesting unkind and hateful and mean things, always trying to make trouble and separate friends. That suggestion about his knowing good and evil made Eve curious. Up to that moment, she didn't even know about evil. In fact, she really didn't know what evil was now. She thought it might be nice to find out what's evil and bad. That's always dangerous. It's the first step in the path to trouble, sadness. We need to always be on guard against people trying to trick us to try something just to see how it feels or what it tastes like. We should never try to learn about evil. We are far better off without such knowledge. No one has to put his hand over a fire to know it's hot. Little by little, Eve surrendered, that means she gave up, to Satan's tricks. First, she began to doubt God's word. Then it seemed as if it wouldn't matter much if she did it. Then she was ready to touch the forbidden fruit. Finally, the temptation was more than she could stand. She reached out her hand and took the fruit and ate it tasted really good. She wondered why she'd waited so long. Surely the serpent was right after all. God couldn't possibly have meant to keep her from eating anything as lovely as this. She gathered some more and took it to Adam, explaining to him what had happened. And he also did eat. No doubt, he said to her, but I thought God told us not to eat this fruit. And she probably said, oh, it's quite all right. The serpent told me I wouldn't die. And as you can see, nothing has happened to me. Maybe God made a mistake. But God had not made a mistake. He had a good reason for telling Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree. It was his way of 
finding out if they really loved him. He had given them so much every good thing, and he'd hoped that they would love him and obey him. Did they really love him? Would they always love him? There is one never-failing test of love, and that is obedience. And that is something you can do with your own mom and dad. If you love them enough, you'll work very hard to be obedient, to do what they say, because they tell you things because they love you. Like they tell you not to run in the road, because you could get hit by a car. They tell you not to put something in a plug-in, because you could get shocked. They tell you only to go swimming if a grown-up is there because they don't want you to drown. They tell you eat good food because they want you to grow strong and healthy. That's how God is with us. He wants all good things for us. So that's why he made some of these rules and your parents did. And if we love them, we will obey them. We will do what they say. Uh, so it is that God told Adam and Eve not to eat that from that tree. It was a simple test. If they really loved him with all their hearts, they wouldn't have touched it. Then God would have let them live forever. Seeing that they disobeyed him, and ate of that tree, he knew he could not trust them. So they would have to die one day and go back to the dust from which he had taken them. Oh, that was such a sad day. There was so much at stake from this little test, if only they had known. But they failed the test both of them. No sooner had they eaten of the fruit than they knew something terrible had changed. Something was wrong. For the first time in their lives, they felt worried. What would God think of them? They wondered. What would he say to them? Then came fear. As the day dragged on and on, and evening shadows lengthened, they talked in frightened whispers. Somehow, all happiness had suddenly gone out of their lives. For the first time, they felt sad, and miserable, and evil. There was no joy in Eden anymore. They only wanted to run and hide. What a pity! Isn't it a shame that they had went from being so happy in the garden to being so sad now? And that happens with us when we do something wrong. Like one time I ran away for a little while from my mom and my mom was very worried and I wasn't allowed to go so far away, but I had. And then I knew I was in a lot of trouble. So I was really worried. And I knew when I got home, things were not gonna be very fun for me. So I was sad. And that's how Adam and Eve were feeling, sad, scared. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Well, day after tomorrow. So, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I love you, I really do. I want you to keep dreaming and keep a story in your heart. Good night. God bless you.